kind of surprising until XESS3 announcement. I actually didn't expect that. Um, you guys have been iterating over the last few years since you've done it, but what was actually the initial blocker from going from FG to MFG? Like, what was that internally? Why did it take time? And what was the advancements that were needed to get it out to market? Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, obviously, when we're changing an algorithm, it takes just development time. So as soon as we got done with our two-way uh, frame gen, we began work on our multi-frame generation. Mm -hmm. And that requires, you know, some new thinking. You need new models. You need new architectures. And, and you know, you got to figure out ways to do it optimal. So you may remember that we do uh, an AI calculation of optical flow which we use for our sort of, uh, you know, our generative process. Now we only do that optical flow model one time. We use that same information for every interpolated frame. So it just saves a lot of performance. So it's that kind of development that our team just takes time to work through. Mm -hmm. There was no particular technical hurdle, I don't think, other than just a lot of engineering work. What about frame pacing, though? Because you're essentially inserting frames in between the real, quote-unquote, yep. real frames. Yeah. Um, do you know how you're doing frame pacing? Is it in hardware? Is it on the CPU? And it's software. software. It's yeah, software? so frame pacing is absolutely required. You can't do frame generation without frame pacing. Maybe I'll show you a, a timing diagram of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But you can see it's very bursty, right? Mm -hmm. It takes a long time to render the base frame. And then the uh, it takes a little bit of time to do optical flow. And then the other interpolated frames are very quick. So if you didn't pace that out, it would look really, really not great. So frame pacing is essential. And I would say that we're really just at the beginning of this whole under understanding of how to make synthesized frames look their best, and frame pacing is clearly part of it. All right. So we're right now at this like point where we've moved to frame gen, and we are moving up the amount of factors that frame gen is having. You guys are touting now three generated frames, one frame, uh, real frame. I don't like saying that. Raster by the way. frame. Raster frame, maybe. Um, where do you see the future of this going exactly from your position? Um, we're going to have 1,000 hertz monitors soon. Yeah, we already do. Um, where would you like to see frame gen going, actually, in the future? I, I, From my personal view, and I think this is still in the research space, but um, I think VR does a pretty good um, model of how this could end up, where there's an engine that's responsible for presenting frames that's always perfect. Mm -hmm. So the engine would be perfectly aligned with a monitor's refresh rate, and it never misses. So think of it like a, sli a small reprojector yeah, yeah. And, a, and a small pacer. And then the generator process would be sort of orthogonal to that. So the question is, how many frames should you raster? How many frames should you generate? Doesn't really matter. The the reprojector is always going to make it perfect to the monitor. So there's lots of uh, interesting ideas about decoupling sort of the raster and the and the generating process from the sort of the projection process. Yeah, I, I could see that coming too. Do you also see um, a future for extrapolation in there at all? I, I think extrapolation is a great technology. It's super hard to get to work right. But if you can do anything to reduce the latency that's apparent to users in this entire frame gen world, I think that's worth worth investigating. But I do think that there are other techniques that are not just extrapolation that will help reduce uh, latency. And uh, for me, I split it into two big chunks. There's latency that is sort of click to photon latency where you did an action and you're looking for a result. There's not much that we can really do to make that look faster. But with the other type of latency, which is, you know, you moved your eyes or you moved your gun yeah. and, and the screen needs to move, that kind of latency can be dramatically improved with multiple different techniques. Like, what do you see in your mind with that? Other, uh, than, other than your proprietary, you know, uh, low latency Intel LL. Like, well, there's definitely that, right? Yeah. But, but beyond that, if you don't, um, if you think about what you're trying to do, you're trying to put the viewport right. into the correct position so that when you render, you're rendering a future view. Right. And that that's all about uh, prediction and accurately predicting where the view will end up being when a when a person is, you know, actually going to see the frame. Yeah. So you also mentioned as part of that, um, the initial optical flow being a, a larger step initially and then, and then the the generated frames maybe being taking a smaller amount of time. Yeah. Do you, how do you see now that Panther Lake's out and it has integrated GPUs in it? Do you see a, some sort of cooperative support there between a dedicated GPU and an integrated GPU to take uh, over this process? You know, we we looked at that back in the day earlier know, yeah. when when we had discrete and integrated all together. Right now, and we never could get that to work well, and it's because there's a limited power budget for the entire platform, and they tend to fight against each other. Mm -hmm. The the real 
uh, I think solution is going to be something that's more about multi-threading of graphical processes. Maybe you have, think of it like you have two different renderers running in parallel on the same engine, perhaps. That's kind of FG at the moment. Yeah. Um, uh, I did try it out earlier. I was actually quite impressed on the low power profile. Um, I, I actually didn't believe first we were doing the 4X mode, which uh -huh. is a very good thing. Yeah. Um, I was only using a controller, but I think that speaks quite well to the we quality. Were you doing like a but, smooth scroll kind of thing? I was doing a smooth scroll. So yeah. I was, uh, uh, but yeah, also some more erratic movements. Uh -huh. um, I think that speaks to the quality, actually. So um, it's already pretty great. It, yeah. it is. I mean, the frame gen stuff is very good. If you slow it down and take like pictures of it and step through, you're still going to see artifacts. But the artifacts, uh, to me, don't distract from the improved experience. And we had a lot of questions going into it, whether frame gen is appropriate when you have relatively low rates of raster. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, you can see by the systems here, integrated, which does have relatively low rates, benefits tremendously from frame gen. The experience is much better. But we're, we're also important to say it's not the same. Right, generated frames are not the same as rastered frames. So we very clearly indicate that in all our material. We talk about our raster performance separately from our frame gen performance. And most of the time we think of frame gen frames as smoothing frames. Mm -hmm. So latency though, in general, do you, do you feel like that is the larger hurdle in this or the, uh, or the like visibility of frame gen errors that is like the, the biggest hurdle going forward? Like what's like, the resistance? That yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah, what's the, re cause in the audience, um, there's definitely, we, we put out, vi <laughs> we put out videos about DLSS 4.5 or whatever. And we talk about FG and a lot of the comments are yeah. very derisive toward <laughs> FG in general. Yes. I think like, NVIDIA has had a hard time. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> I'm but, sorry guys. Like, I know what, what, do you, what do you think <laughs> is actually like the hurdle towards wider adoption among our uh, So I don't ever throw others under the bus. Right. But I think this started off on the wrong foot, where uh, where we were, you know, some people were trying to make this sound like it was performance. Right. Right. And and, and I think the pushback from the community is saying it's not, right? It don't we don't think of it like performance. So I think that's the bigger thing. Mm -hmm. Like let's let's separate it into its own space and say what's happening is a visual improvement effort. It's different from the horsepower of your car, right? The horsepower is the horsepower and it has, it has its own spec. Um, but this is like trying to make what that horsepower engine does feel better. Yeah. So I, I feel like it's a little bit of the position that it started in. So we're trying to do our part by saying, Hey, these are very clearly different. And we, we like to think of them as different things. That's, that's what animation air is all about, actually yeah, yeah. trying, trying to help separate FPS from smoothness.